This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Student charged in St. Elizabeth Goat Theft Case A 15-year-old student was offered bail after he was implicated in a case of predial larceny in St. Elizabeth on Friday. According to the St. Elizabeth Police, the teen who is from Turner Top District near the Manchester St. Elizabeth border was found with six goats in his possession after a farmer reported them stolen. Police said that the animals were stolen in Goshen District about 3 a.m. on Friday. They say during an operation, the stolen goats were found in the neighboring community of Pepper in the teen's possession. He was arrested and charged and later offered bail and is scheduled to appear in the St. Elizabeth Children's Court in Santa Cruz on June 13. The police said they are still searching for other suspects involved in the case. One dead in Hanover crash. One man is dead and at least three people hospitalized following a two-vehicle collision in Hanover on Saturday afternoon. The crash reportedly occurred on the Escher Main Road in the vicinity of the Escher Primary School's entrance. The deceased man has been identified as a 26-year-old Rasheen Reed of a Lancis Bay address in the parish. Reports are that shortly before 5 p.m., a blue Mitsubishi motor car driven by Reed with three occupants, a woman and two children, was traveling from the direction of Lucy towards the Green Island when the vehicle collided with a Toyota Highest bus traveling in the opposite direction. The occupants of the car were taken to hospital where Reed was pronounced dead. Details surrounding the occupants of the bus are unclear at this time. Reed's aunt Juliet Jarrett told the news that her nephew's death comes less than a month after the burial of another relative. Missima funeral and indeed so happy and everything. This one lick like a tornado. It rough man, a young youth, I may tell you my nephew nice, expressed Jarrett. The Lucy police are investigating. Taxi operator held over ammo found in car. 28-year-old Oshin Reed, a taxi operator of Silverstone, Greater Portmore in St. Catherine, is scheduled to face the court to answer to the charge of illegal possession of ammunition following an incident on Brunswick Avenue in the parish on Friday, May 6. Reports from the Spanish Town Police are that, about 4.30 p.m., lawmen were conducting patrols in the area when they signaled the driver of a Nissan AD wagon motor car to stop. The driver failed to comply. He was later intercepted. The motor vehicle was subsequently searched and the 69 mm rounds of ammunition were found in the glove compartment of the vehicle. Reed was subsequently arrested and charged. His court date is being finalized. Manchester man charged with breaches of the Firearms Act. 34-year-old Shane Johnson of Cottage Pen, Manchester, have been arrested and charged in connection with a shooting incident in May 2020 on the Winston Jones Highway in the parish. Reports from the Mandeville Police are that about 11.20 a.m., a team of officers were on an operation in the area when they went in pursuit of a Toyota Axio motor car with armed men on board. Upon their approach, the police were met with a gunfire. They returned the fire and the men abandoned the motor car and fled in the area on foot. One firearm was found in the motor car during subsequent search. An investigation was launched and with technological aid, Johnson was identified when fingerprints from the scene were recognized by the force's fingerprint identification system. He was arrested and charged on Friday, May 6, for shooting with intent, illegal possession of firearm, illegal possession of ammunition, and assault at the common law following a question-and-answer interview in the presence of his attorney. Man killed in Mandeville mob attack days before wedding. Residents are still in disbelief and the shock that a man whom they described as a well-respected citizen and a dedicated community member was killed in a mob attack in Mandeville days before his wedding. Chieftain Campbell, 62, died from injuries he sustained after he was beaten by a crowd of people on Lower Manchester Road mid-afternoon on Friday. He is a decent citizen. He just buried his mother a month ago. It is so saddening to how they beat him and kill him, said Victoria Town resident Audrey Pinnock Goss. 
His death sparked a protest in southern Manchester on Saturday as residents used debris and downed trees to block sections of the main road in their community. Residents said the father of three had just left his common-law wife in a nail salon when the mob attack started. A man who identified himself as Patrick, otherwise called Chicky, said the residents wanted justice. The lady just fly down to get married. She was across the road doing her nails. The man parked him van to go across the road to get some stuff. He had a lot of cash on him and they beat him and took away the cash. So I want to know about all the cameras in Mandeville, he said. A video which went viral on social media shows a Campbell line on a sidewalk surrounded by a group hurling robbery accusations. They didn't show us when all the citizens were beating the man. So we want the police to locate all the cameras in Mandeville in their investigation to find the real culprits, said Patrick. Campbell's neighbor Nicola Stewart believes his death was a case of mistaken identity. I have known him for over 45 years. I have not known him to be a criminal. I have not known him to be in any wrongdoing. So it was surprising yesterday when I got a call that Mr. Campbell was killed in Mandeville, she said. I thought that they had robbed him and killed him, but I found out that citizens mobbed him and claimed he was a robber, she added. I think it was a case of mistaken identity, she said. Residents have criticized the police for handcuffing Campbell before he was taken to the hospital. Police handcuffed the man and the man telling the police that he is diabetic and it is tight around his hand, said another resident, Verna Brooks Hudson. Another resident blamed the police for Campbell's death. Police responsible for the man's death. The roadblock now stop until we get justice, he said. However, head of the Manchester Police Superintendent Lloyd Darby on Friday explained that officers were on foot patrol in Mandeville when they saw the crowd. The crowd accused the man of stealing and the police realized that he had blood around the area of his nostrils, said Darby. He said the police took Campbell to the Mandeville Regional Hospital where he died while undergoing treatment. He made an appeal for anyone with information that can assist in the investigation to contact the police. Councillor Claudia Morante Baker of the Poorest Division Jamaica Labour Party said she knew Campbell well. He was committed to this community. When you hear the people venting, they have to vent because to me, Victoria Town lost a legend, a good and humble person, she said. She said hospital staff did everything they could to save his life. When I spoke to people at the hospital and they told me that they did everything possible to try to resuscitate him, I cried. It hurts to know that a father, friend and a brother is gone because of a misunderstanding, she said. She is appealing to citizens to refrain from mob attacks. I want to tell the residents that when these circumstances arise, let the police do their work. Don't take matters into your hands. Because of that, now an innocent man's life is gone, she said. She said Campbell was a member of the Victoria Town School Board. We are all crying because we know the value of this man. He serves on the school board. He serves his community. I spoke to him two days before he died, and he reminded me that he was going to check in with the school, she said. This can't be a bad man. You take away from us a good man, she lamented in closing. Teacher recounted death threat from six-year-old in inner city. Bemoaning the negative impact that violence is having on the nation's children, a basic school teacher in an inner city community in western Jamaica recounted that she once received a death threat from a disobedient six-year-old student whom she attempted to discipline. The teacher who lives in the gritty community nestled in the Area 1 Police Division and who spoke to the news on terms of anonymity reflected that the child's father was a reputed gunman in the community. The early childhood educator said that after kicking and squeezing his classmates, the recalcitrant boy was ordered to stand, but much to her bewilderment, the boy retorted by making an expletive-laced threat to the teacher in the presence of his classmates. One of the students threatened me. Some time ago, there was one particular student whose father was a gunman. He was very disobedient. This six-year-old was kicking up the children, squeezing their necks. I called to him twice. He did not stop. The third time I told him to stand up for a period of time, he burst out with expletives and threatened that he was going to make his father shoot me. I said, Jesus loves you. I am going to pray for you, the still visible shaken educator revealed. Violence is affecting the school. Some of the children who live in the community are acutely affected by it. I am living in the heart of it. 
On the way to school the following morning and passing by the child's home, she was approached by the child's father, who indicated that he didn't want the child to follow in his footpath. The following morning, I was passing his father's house. He said, Teacher, I don't want him to come like me. I want him to behave himself and be nice. The teacher reflected. The teacher revealed that during the peak of gang-related feud in the community, where the school is situated, the students would frequently dramatize the scenes of violence they witnessed in their communities, such as pretending to be shooting by pointing fingers at each other, as well as imitate police handcuffing community members. The police had to be called in at one stage to speak with the children, the educator said. They played out in school. They used their fingers, pose as if they are shooting, point it at each other or hold it at each other's neck. And some go behind other students and cross their hands behind them as if they are handcuffing them, the concerned teacher said. One six-year-old girl who had a close family member gunned down in the community told the news that each time she hears the gunshots, she becomes so afraid that she has to be cuddled by her mother. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.